In this lesson, we're going to talk about TCP IP host addresses. Now, with most protocols, we come up with a host address by concatenating the logical network address with a logical host address, and TCP IP does this very thing. We use a single number for a given host that contains both the network address and the host address. Let's take a look at how it works. Now, before we get going, you need to understand that there are actually two different versions of IP addresses. There's the version 4 and the version 6 IP addresses. Version 4 is what is currently in use by most organizations today, and it's what's used on the Internet. V6 has been proposed and it's been around for a long time, but it hasn't been widely deployed yet. It will be at some point. For now, what we're going to be dealing with is version 4 IP addresses. Now, version 4 IP address is composed of four different octets separated by periods. When I first heard the term octet, I said, what on earth is that? Back when I was first learning about computer networks. And I was too embarrassed to ask anyone, so I went for years not really being sure exactly what an octet is. Well, take a look at the word. What does oct mean? Oct means eight. Groups of eight. Groups of eight what? Let's take a look at an, at an average IP address. Let's take a look at 192.168.1.10. This is a very common IP address. Well, we say that each of these are octets. How is that an octet? So three characters here, three characters here, or digits, I said say one digit here, two digits here. Where does the eight come into play? We call it an octet because these numbers, which we reference here in decimal notation, are actually treated by the system and by the network as binary numbers. Now, we usually write out an IP address using decimal notation because our minds work better with base 10 numbers. We have 10 fingers, we have 10 toes, Decimal numbers look normal to us. Binary numbers, on the other hand, do not look normal to us. With a binary numbering system, you can have two different numbers, a 0 or a 1. That's it. You cannot have a 2, you can't have a 3, you can't have a 4, etc. However, you can convert between base 10 numbering systems and base 2 numbering systems, or binary. For example, if we were to write this IP address in binary numbers, it would look like this. Six, so it's 11 followed by six zeros. The 168 is translated into N, 10, N, 0, 0. The 1 is translated into seven zeros, six, seven, and then a 1. And then the 10 is translated into six zeros, and then one zero. These are the binary equivalents of these numbers. Now, if you take a look at these binary numbers, how many of them are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You see where the octet comes into play? We call each of these octets because they're actually composed of an 8-bit binary number, hence the term octet. Okay? Now, because each of these is actually an 8-bit binary number, there is a minimum and a maximum value that can appear in each octet. In binary terms, the minimum value that you can have is eight zeros. Okay, That's the minimum. And in decimal equivalent, that would be zero. For a maximum, because we're dealing with a binary, the maximum number you can have is eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones. If we were to convert those eight ones into a decimal number, it would be 255. Therefore, no decimal number in an IP address can be any higher than 255. The lowest it can be is zero. Okay? And this will make you chuckle. If you ever watch shows about computers and hackers and things like that, many times you'll see them use IP addresses that use numbers that are greater than 255. I watched one recently, and it had a 384 as one of the octets, and I just started laughing. Do you know why? It's impossible to have. It's an 8-bit binary number. You cannot get the decimal number 384 using 8 binary numbers. It's impossible. The highest you can get is 255. Now, the address I just showed you, 192.168.1.10, 
is a typical IP address that can be assigned to a host in a network. Now, as we said earlier, an IP address that's assigned to a host is actually two different things in one. It is a logical network address concatenated with a logical host address. How do you tell which part of that address is the network address and how much is the host address? It all depends on a unique part of IP addressing that most people really struggle with but actually isn't that hard called subnet masking. Let's take a look at how subnet masks work. How much of this address is the network address? How much of it is the particular host address? Remember we said that this address is a concatenation of two different things, the logical network address plus the logical host address. Which part is which? Well, that depends. With IP, we can use the subnet mask to determine how much of this address is network and how much of this address is node or host. Let's write down a sample subnet mask. Let's do 255, 255, 255.0. Now, do you remember when we were talking about binary numbers, what is 255 in binary? It's all ones, eight ones, right? Okay. In this subnet mask, if we looked at it in binary form, it'd be eight ones, eight ones, eight ones, eight zeros. The way you decide how much of this address is network and how much of it is node is by lining up the octets like this and looking for the parts that are populated in the mask. In this case, this part is populated. The 192 has a 255 value. The 168 octet has a 255 value. The 1 octet has a 255 value. But the 10 octet over here has a 0. Anytime you have an octet populated in the subnet mask, that indicates that that is the network address. So this is network, this is network, this is network, this is host. What we have here is 192.168.1 as the network address. And we're dealing with IP, the network address always ends in a zero. Anytime you see a zero as the last octet of an IP address, you automatically know that that is a network address. And then we concatenate it with a host address, in this case, 10. So 192, 1.0 is the network. 10 is the host. We add them together. We get 192.168.1.10. Now, in this example, we had three different octets in the subnet mask. They were either all ones or all zeros, one or the other. It is possible to use part of an octet with ones and part with zeros and have what's called partial subnetting. That is where we say that the network address is part of an octet but not all of it. We're not going to get into partial subnetting here. Instead, we're going to look at the default subnet masks for the different classes of IP addresses. Let's start by looking at the class A address subnet mask. With a class A IP address, we use a subnet mask of 255 dot zero dot zero dot zero. Now, based on what I've told you about how we determine network and node with a subnet mask, how much of a class A IP address is network and how much is node? Right here. Okay. With a class A IP address, say I had an address of 10.0.0.1, this much is network, this much is host. Different than the last address we looked at. So how do you know if an address is a class A address? We look at the first octet value right here in this IP address. If it is between 0 and 126 in decimal terms, then you have a class A IP address. If you were to look at the binary equivalent, all class A IP addresses have the first bit of the first octet set to 0. So class A address, first octet is network, the rest is node, it has to be between 0 and 126. Now, because we can go from 0 to 126, we can have an actual maximum of 127, theoretically, we can't actually use all of them, we can have a maximum of 127 different network addresses. That's not very many. How many of these addresses can we have? Lots, because we can do everything from 0 to 255, technically you can't really use 0 and 255, so let's say you can use from 1 to 254 in each of these three different octets. If you do the math, you get millions and millions and millions of possible addresses. 
Now let's look at a class B IP address. With a class B IP address, the subnet mask is 255.255.0.0. Knowing what you know about subnet masks, how much of a class B address is network and how much is node? Right there, the first two octets of a class B address are the network address. The last two octets are the host address. A class B address can be in the range of 128 to 191. 128 to 191. If you looked at the binary equivalent of a class B address, the first bit of the first octet would always start with the number 1. So let's take a look at an example of a class B address. It has to be within this range, so it would, let's say, 172.76.3.1. That is a class B address. How do you know? Because the decimal value of the first octet is between 128 and 191. We know that it uses a default mask of 255.255.000. So we know that right here is the break. This much is network, this much is node. Let's take a look at a class C address. The default mask for a class C address is 255.255.255.0. This is the mask we were using with our very first example. How do you decide if an address is a class C address? Once again, you look at the first octet of the IP address, and if it is between 192 and 223, you know that that is a class C address. If you were to look at it in the first octet in binary form, the first two bits of all class C addresses would be 1, 1. As an example, we could say 192.168.3.5. We know that this is a class C address because it is between 192 and 223 in the first octet. We know that because it's a class C, it has a default subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 0. So we know that the break is right here. This much is network, this much is host. Now, before we go on, we need to take a look at one thing. Remember back up here, we said that the class A address, where this much is network and this much is host, we can only have a very limited number of network addresses, but tons and tons of host addresses. Well, the same thing holds true down here with the class C, but just in reverse. Because we're using three octets for the network address, we can have tons and tons and tons of network addresses, but a very, very limited number of host addresses. In fact, on a class C network, because we are only using the last octet over here, for the host portion of the address, this value of this last octet can only be 0 to 255. Now, we said earlier that 0 is reserved for networks, and actually 255 is reserved as well. That's used for broadcast. So actually what you can use is from 1 to 254. Therefore, on a Class C IP network, you can only assign hosts a value from 1 to 254, which means you can have a very limited number of hosts on a given Class C network. Although you can have tons of Class C networks themselves, but you can only have a limited number of hosts on them because we're using most of our bits for network and very few of our bits for the host address. Most of the work you're going to be doing will be with Class A, B, and C IP addresses. Now, there are actually two other classes of IP addresses. You won't actually do a whole lot with these, but on occasion you will. These are the Class D and Class E. E address ranges. Let's take a look at those next. With a class D IP address, the decimal value of the first octet is between 224 and 239. Now class D's are special. These are called multicast addresses. These are used for different network services on the network, which we won't get into here. But essentially what you can do is configure a network board with an additional multicast address and then it becomes a member of a multicast group. This allows you to send information all at once to multiple machines, but only the machines who are members of the multicast group. Say you have a group of servers and they need to exchange locations of particular services using the SLP protocol. You can make them members of the multicast group, and then when the information is broadcast, instead of going to all the hosts on the network, it only goes to those who are members of the group. It can be very useful. And then, of course, we have class... E IP addresses. You probably won't do a whole lot with class E's. These are just experimental. The value of the first octet of a class E address is between 240 and 255. That's it for this lesson.
In this lesson, we talked about the role of TCP IP addresses. We talked about the fact that an IP address is composed of the host and the logical network addresses together. We also talked about the role of the subnet mask. And then we talked about the five different classes of IP.